Hey, so just got to the property now, and this is it. And there's just a little section over there. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, there's not much dew on the lawn, but I'm just gonna go around with the blower and just take some of that dew off. It's just gonna help with the clear up, really. Um, the drier it is, the easier it is. But first, before I do that, I'm just gonna, I've not used the aerator for a while, so I'm just gonna get the, turn the engine on, get it rumbling, just to, just to warm it up a little. So when I do the quote, the first thing I do is speak to the client and or one of the questions I need to ask is there any irrigation, um, any wires, you know, for lighting or electricity to a shed or anything which runs under the surface of the grass that he's aware of. Um, obviously I'm going down to depths of about four inches, so anything lower than that is generally fine, but obviously I don't want to cause any destruction or end up with a with a bill for something that I've broken. Um, in this garden, there's obviously four manholes, but they're pretty visible. Um, and then the other thing, which always catches people out, is the uh, the hole for the washing line over there. Obviously the washing line's in it so I can see it, but um, one thing to note when you're taking your quote is if they haven't got a washing line set up, to find out what they've got and if it has got a metal holder in the ground um, find out where that is so what after you've done a first strip all you need to do is just to go through and just have a look at the, the grass or the, the cores that you're taking out I just need to make sure that I'm going in deep enough so that I'm taking any thatch out and uh, I'm just going into the soil. I don't want to take too much soil out. Uh, just enough so I'm removing the thatch and then just touching into the soil so um, the air can get into the soil, the nutrients. Um, this client in particular is going to fertilise himself afterwards. So um, all it means is the, the fertiliser can get into the holes. Okay, so one thing to be aware of, because this is, you know, quite a lot of clay in this soil, um, it's pretty sticky. And what you end up with is a build-up around the wheels, as well as a, a build-up on your shoes. The clay and the mud builds up on the wheels. It's actually lifting the, uh, the aerator up a little bit, so the tines aren't going in as deeply as what they originally were. So, so with your spatula, just periodically, just scrape some off.
thing that's worth bearing in mind when you finished is all the muck all the muck that's in there and everything which is around the wheels it's always a good idea if you can clean it off while you're doing the clear up um, probably best to just let it dry for the minute while I'm clearing up the rest of the lawn and then clear it up otherwise you take it home or wherever and um, then you've just got to do it there so I always tend to do it while I'm in the garden um, and then it can all be cleared up together at the same time okay so the lawn's done now um, it's all aerated and you can see all the holes in the ground and um, now it's just a case of clearing everything up it never looks that messy to be honest but it'll take quite a while I'm just going to blow it into piles and then a, then a snow shovel to clear it up Okay, so that's pretty much it. The clear up's done. Um, or it's certainly into piles now, so I've managed to get most of it away. Just left two piles now, which I need to pick up, and I'll use the snow shovel for that. And then that's pretty much it. So we're... the one thing you have to watch when you're doing jobs like this is the, um, the actual aeration's actually only taken one hour. But by the time I finished this, the clear up would have taken the best part of three hours. So um, certainly when you make it, when you're quoting for jobs like this, you've really got to consider how time consuming they actually are from start to finish.
One of the important things to remember is to not overfill the bags because this gets really heavy really quickly. So each time you put a shovel in, keep picking it up, keep making sure you can lift it. Otherwise, you've just got to shovel it back out again. One of the great things of um, having all these cores is you actually can reuse them to level out undulating areas. Now, okay, the quality of this um, soil and you know the plant isn't particularly good, but this is a rough area where people walk to the dumping area. So I can fill this in with this, and this is just going to level it off a little bit. So it's a good way of recycling it. So one thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my 17 mil spanner and I'm going to remove the tines and I'm going to put the solid tines back on. And the reason I'm going to do that is, obviously this bit of kit is a big bit of investment, you know, a couple of thousand pounds at least. Um, and obviously it pays for itself while I'm using it, but it is a machine that has a lot of downtime. And one way I found to get that money back that I've invested into it is, and this is only for particular friends who work in the business, who I trust, I've known for a long time, and that is that I actually hire it out to them at the same sort of price as um, the local hire shop would be hiring it out at. Um, the only advantage is, is that if they don't get it back to me by a certain time, I'm not going to charge them another day's rent. So. It's a, it's a nice little arrangement and I know these guys well and I know they have tool insurance and I know that you know they're going to look after it if they break it, they fix it, you know if it was to get stolen they would replace it um, and I've been doing that for a number of years. It certainly helped me to pay this investment off a lot quicker.